Yeah, Ben yeah, joins the club of stingy airlines that doesn't put the customer first. And Albania is a great example of just doing the bare minimum for charging a premium price. Guess what guys, after an hour I finally received a coffee. So yeah, the serving experience here is a joke, absolute joke. Today we are flying on Albania's flag carrier and the airline is a great example of how to put profit over a decent customer experience. When Albania's management comes together, they're asking themselves how can we steal more money out of our passengers' pocket by providing the absolute bare minimum. Instead of brainstorming how to improve their product or allocate more money towards crew training or a better catering experience, they just focus on cost cutting, which will eventually hurt their brand. So please enjoy today's Let's video see, uh, on how Air busy. Albania and is on a path bigger. of self-destruction. So a beautiful good morning from apparently the best airport in the world. I don't know whether I agree with that or not, but let me know in the comment section below if you do. But today we are flying an airline that I had on my radar for a long time, Air Albania to Tirana. So let's check in. Albania is a joint venture of Turkish Airlines and the Albanian government and with only two planes and a limited network the dream of every CEO to turn this into a great boutique airline bringing an amazing product and a brand to life backed by the know-how of Turkish Airlines. However, the reality is somehow different. Okay. That was quick. Nice Alright, thank you. Do, you. do you have lounge access here as well? Or does it come with lounge access? Uh, um, no. There's no lounge, yeah? No. Okay, cool. Thank you. So I'm all checked in, but I don't know what it is with airlines these days. You pay 400 euros, which is like 450 USD for a 90 minute business class flight. And once again, no lounge is included. So I don't know whether this is a trend. If so, it's a worrying trend, but I don't know why and where that money goes to then. You know, you pay all that extra and uh, you don't get access to the lounge, which is usually a given when flying business class but yeah I don't know why Air Albania is doing that. So I was able to use fast track perhaps I'm able to use the lounge as well she just misunderstood me so let's go there and check it out. So a moment of truth let's see whether they're gonna let us in because the airline will eventually still be charged for the fast track so maybe it was just a translation error and she didn't know what it was but we find out in a minute. So much bad luck with lounges this year for me, isn't it? <laughs> it's airlines? Air Albania. Do you have voucher? No, no. It's not included? Alright, that's fine. Thank you. So as predicted, there is no lounge access even on a 400 euro ticket on a 90 minute flight. Albania joins the club of stingy airlines that doesn't put the customer first. It's very sad, but that's the reality. Airlines are trying to get cheap. So guys, just to give you an idea how huge this airport is, this is B13, the really west end of the airport. And now I'm gonna take you all the way to the east end, um, the F gates. Um, no help is allowed, no moving walkways. So I'm gonna take the time and we see how long it takes from one end to the other very end at Istanbul airport. So let's do this. I've departed from Istanbul around 50 times and it's always quite a workout. Big doesn't necessarily mean great and whether it's a long taxiways to actually get to your runway or transiting between gates, make always sure that you bring your running gear when you come to this airport. It also has no infrastructure with literally no hotels nearby and the only choice you have is to stay the night at the overpriced Yotel Hotel. That's what happens if you rush a project for prestige only. 
Damn it. Here we are, guys. F18, the very end of the East End. And guess what? And I, I had quite a pace. It took 21 minutes, as you can see, 21 minutes and 40 seconds. And it's almost 2K. Maybe even more. I don't know. 2, 2K, 2 kilometers and uh, 200 meters, so 2,200 meters in total. And that's, that's how big the airport is. So let's say you're in your late 60s and you arrive at the F gate and your connection is at the B gate, you probably need like 40 minutes, 35 minutes. It's quite a distance, it's quite a hike. Now let's wait for Air Albania's Airbus A320, is it a 320 or 319 to take us to Tirana. And there she was, Air Albania's Airbus A320, of which they operate too. The airline offers an average of three flights a day between Tirana and Istanbul, and sometimes even four. So it's fair to say that this is the airline's flagship route and pretty much their bread and butter. So what you see today is what you most likely get. So there we go, boarding Air Albania's Airbus A320. Can't wait. So guys, and here we are. Welcome on board Air Albania's Airbus A220, which is 15 years old. Uh, originally introduced uh, with Indigo 2008 and then uh, flew with Etihad for most of its time. And as you can see, it's not a dedicated business class seat. Unfortunately, it is a Euro business class, which means uh, identical seat to economy, only the middle seat is blocked. Also, crew seems quite stressed and unfriendly, but from visiting Albania before, they need a little bit time to warm up and then they usually turn into pretty awesome individuals. So we still give them another 90 minutes until we get to Tirana. So boarding completed, we are just pushing back, uh, turning on the engines. As you can see, uh, not too busy in business class either and also surprised to see that uh, the crew is allowed to chew gum that's something i haven't come across either but these days now crew uh, is allowed to show tattoos they're allowed to chew gums um, wear more comfortable footwear and all these kind of things so yeah industry is changing a little bit isn't it I think Air Albania is a great example why the industry is a bit in crisis, especially when it comes to service and actually giving back to the customer but charging a lot of money. As for example, this flight, 400 euros, no lounge access, we talked about this. Now the crew came around and asked um, what I want to have to drink and obviously there's no alcoholic beverages served on a business class flight, which I find very interesting. and. Also for those 400 euros that they charge, you couldn't just print out a menu, but then if they would have printed out a menu, it would have been useless because the only choice they have is um, fish. Fish with rice, uh, so there's no other meal that you can uh, pick from. That is absolutely unheard of in business class, um, especially in Europe, though Europe European business now is a nightmare, right? But you always have choice at least. I recently flew Lufthansa and Euro business. You had a couple of choices. They had a menu, they had alcoholic beverages. Um, and also, the couple in front of me, they had a bit of an argument uh, with the crew as well, and they couldn't believe the fact that there's only one meal available. 
and especially fish a lot of people are allergic to fish so so i don't know why it is like this but i feel like air albania is extremely stingy and cheap no focus on delivering a great customer experience and that reflects here it is just really sad to see and i think that's why voices like mine or dan's or noel um, are more important than ever that we speak out and raise these issues why is it that everything in the industry all the flights are getting more expensive would you give less and less to the customer um, I, I find that horrendous and it's a roaring trend that we have to fight against and Air Albania is a great example of just doing the bare minimum for charging a premium price but now you may say hey Josh Albania is a small country and your business class sucks well then you should wait for next week's video flying Bulgaria Air an airline that shows that a small tiny country can absolutely set a new trend in your business class standards so here's the meal in terms of plating and presentation looks fine it looks great you know a huge portion as well um, I can't complain about that but then once again the service experience here is uh, yeah rather disappointing she didn't ask me if I want to have anything to drink and uh, yeah I don't know what their job is what they're here for but I mean, these are the basics no? so the crew walks past I ask her hey can I have a coke and she's like, Coke, we don't have. And looks at me. And was ready to wo walk on. Instead of saying, yeah, Coke, we don't have. But we have this and that and this and whatever. And then I literally ask him, oh, is there anything else you have? And she said, yeah, we have orange juice. So, yeah, I have one of those. So, service experience here is underwhelming. Underwhelming. Absolutely underwhelming. We're so rude on this flight. There's no here, here you go, here's your orange shoes, you want anything else? No please, no thank you, no nothing. Awful. So I'm not kidding, 45 minutes ago I ordered a coffee. I still haven't received it. I followed up once, still nothing. Um, also quite nice example. The couple in front of me they ask so what kind of fish is it and the crew answered with i don't know you know if this is your job and you come you come to your job prepared i mean if you have a briefing before the flight and you only have that one meal then at least be an expert on on that and be able to provide some information instead of saying i don't know so yeah the service experience here is a joke absolute joke Albania should actually invest a lot of time and money into their crew training and 45 minutes for coffee honestly that is unheard of just one question is the coffee still coming you know I ordered a coffee with you? I thought that uh, she... No, 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 not yet. I was just like, I don't know. Is it? Right now. Awesome, thank you. So yeah, followed up third time. They actually forgot about my coffee. Thank you. Enjoy. No, you. I take it there. All right. Guess what, guys? After an hour, I finally received a coffee. Happy days. I have so many things to say about this flight, so please stay until the end of the video and let me share my thoughts with you. But today was again a prime example that due to COVID, a lot of service and hospitality champions have left the industry to work in other jobs. And by the end of the day, it's so easy just to smile and prepare for your job. The average salary in Albania is 800 euros, so they charge two weeks worth of that for a flight with no choice, below any standards and crew that turns up at their work literally not knowing what fish they serve or which beverages they have. Well, then you wait an hour for a coffee. It is probably also the only airline in Europe that doesn't offer lounge access or serves alcohol in their premium cabin. 
Air Albania, you should be ashamed offering this kind of money for nothing. So guys, here we are, finally at the hotel. A beautiful view of Tirana. Look at this. The lovely capital of Albania. Actually, fun fact, the last time I was here is like 15 years ago and the city has changed so much. Um, and so is the industry, I feel like. Today's um, flight on Air Albania was an absolute letdown. Starting with the lounge, and so uh, we start with the 400 euro price tag on it, the lounge. Um, also, what stands testament for all this is you pay for something like, um, oh, you get on the plane first, you get off the plane first, uh, as an extra perk of business class, for example. And I put that huge priority tag on your bag, and guess what? My bag arrived the last. Everyone was out already, and uh, this is this is just the details, you know. This is part of the experience. This is what you what you pay for, and you don't get it. There was no meal choice. Uh, it's not a, like what, where I can look the other way is the fact it's a Euro business class. It's not a dedicated seat. I get this, you know. No booze, no alcohol, no choice of a meal. Um, service was. Um, disappointing. Waiting 45 minutes for your coffee. That's disappointing, you know. You know, if the airline would be sponsoring me and I would say I'm Chui, I would say, yes, best airline in the world. It's great, fantastic. Uh, everything is amazing, but this is not my motivation, you know. With this videos, we want to like challenge the airlines to really give us what we pay for, you know. And this is what makes me like sometimes really angry and annoying that us customers, we spend all this money, we're promised an, a, a superior product, you know, I could have spent a hundred dollars on on economy class, and in the end, it would be the same. I would probably be at the hotel before the business class passengers because there's no priority tax, so which means my bag comes before the business class um, bag. So this is, you know, this is like problems in the industry that keep on coming up. That the that the airlines they don't really challenge themselves to be great, to be uh, really like superior, you know. And this is this is something where they need a reminder that um, you charge a lot of money but you don't give anything to us you know and I think today stands testament for the decline there is in the service industry and especially this year 2024 is a year where I notice it so much that service is really declining you know and it's sad and this is unnecessary so why not go back to the good old days you know why is it so hard <sighs> you know but this should be it let me know guys what you think uh, how is 20 2024 going for you in terms of service have you noticed something um shared with us and also um if you want to have some extra packs you know access my whatsapp group have early access to my videos um get the kl key ring have your name in the credits and many more check out the link in the description box below this is it for me now i'll be um staying a couple of days in tirana and then my next flight is an all-time favorite, a video that reached, I think, a million views in 2021, Bulgaria Air, which was an absolute shit show. I'm sure a lot of you remember it. Uh, it caused a lot of <laughs> troubles as well. So after two years, we're gonna give them a new chance. They have new planes. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see whether they have a new updated product as well. And uh, then I am off to Africa after this as well. So hit that subscribe button. There's so much great content coming. Uh, so stay tuned. I'm gonna chill now a little bit, take it easy and uh, have a rest, well-deserved rest. And I see you guys next week.